We've come from so many places on this earth, but our lives share a common destiny as we walk together. In a time of crisis or in a time of peace, this is a story of 8 billion beating hearts. We share this one fragile planet, the air we breathe, the land we walk on, and the oceans we swim in. Imagine borders that surround us, some more fortified than others. Borders for many of us define our lives today. For global capital and those with the right passports, borders are easy. For the global masses, these borders tell us where we can and cannot go. For the world's two billion Muslims, one out of every four people on this earth, our lives are interconnected by the diaspora of our hearts, of our families, and a spiritual lineage that stretches back 14 centuries. But we are only told stories that put us in boxes to police our identities. What if the full story was told about our faith, about our lives, about our cultures, the story of our love for humanity and our stories as protectors of the world? This is for the future builders, the dreamers, those who want to escape from the futility of generations past destroying our shared world. Media has been built to divide us. We ask, what if it was built to connect? This is a manifesto written across screens. We need you. Beyond languages, beyond cultures, beyond faiths, beyond all barriers and borders, we need each other. This is for all of us. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We just saw this uh, beautiful film from, from our sister Yasmin Ahmed and uh, Mu'alif, the convert. And we hope you all were t t tuned in. And if not, you can still register online to get a link to the film, to see the film over the next 48 hours. My name is Dustin Cron. I'm coming to you from Southern California. I'm the founder of the Center for Global Muslim Life. We're a media and cultural production hub that's working across faith and politics and culture to connect people around the world, to build understanding uh, and, and to create symposium where we can connect Muslims around the world and people of different faith in unique ways. And so we just launched during Ramadan and now our first global symposium, so to say, is this film festival where we have the, the our first global Muslim film festival where we have 40 films from around the world um, 26 live sessions over the next month, and we're really blessed to start tonight uh, in Malaysia and in Southeast Asia, a place that I love, a place that I've lived, uh, a place that you know is very true, and near and dear to my heart, with the beauty of the people there uh, and the love and the culture uh, and and the love of the hearts that I've felt. So you know, with, it's really interesting in building a festival like this where there's very few, even though there's every type of film market in the world. You know, Ava DuVernay's studio array is a great example of someone who's been organizing and helping to distribute African and African-American film around the world. But for Muslims, outside of things like Ertugol, there's very little uh, consumption of global Muslim film with, each other, with, with diverse populations around the planet. And that's what we're really trying to change. We're A, showing that we're a market, that we consume each other's content, and that we're, we're interested in diverse content whether it is from Southeast Asia, whether it's from the, you know, North Africa or Europe or the United States. And we have this talent, we have this amazing talented community making this content all over the world. The question is whether or not you know where to find it or whether or not it's, it's, it, it receives distribution. So, uh, you know, and a great example of that for me is that I found the first time I saw Sharif Amani was on Ajibna Chinta, which I probably am, am, am botching the name but it's on Netflix here in the United States. And it was a really, really beautiful uh, television show that, that, I, that I really liked and I connected with. And I was like, wow, there's all these Malay dramas, Islamic dramas all over Netflix, if you can find them. So this is really about helping people find amazing content, you know, connecting and God willing, also helping Muslim filmmakers to find distribution. And so we'll bring in, we'll bring in some of the, we'll bring in the cast of the film that we have with us. Yeah, thank you all for joining us. Oh, wait, I think Thanks people for are having us, Dustin. Yeah, yeah. Salamat Hari Raya. 
Oh, selamat hari raya. Ani, I think yeah. you're mute. <laughs> Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Selamat hari yeah. raya. I do feel Selamat hari raya. Yes, and a, and a big wave and clap. This is the camera clap for the film. Mashallah, really beautiful and incredible. Thank you all for your work. I know we've, we've been, you've been celebrating the film for many years, but thank you for joining us again. Uh, I think almost 11 or 12 years after the film was first released. And we wanted, you know, we wanted to recognize the, the work uh, of Yasmin Ahmed, and we wanted to bring attention to this film as a, as a, a global as something that, that people in the world should be consuming. And of course they have, the film is played in Asian film festivals and it's played in the United States all over. And, and, but, it, but I don't think a lot of the Muslim community may know about the film and may know about the beauty of the content and the beauty of the story um, and may not know about Sister Yasmin's work who, who passed away 10 years ago. And, and there's a, actually a, a beautiful museum where we're streaming live as well in Ipo, Malaysia where you can find out more about her work and, and we can get into that as well. But we wanted to give her an award and the, the, you know, as part of this film festival, we wanna also award people who've been doing the work, right? Not just, not just celebrate things that are brand new. And so with that, we wanted to give her an UMA Film Vision Award for her clarity of vision in her films, for her deep work to create understanding and belonging through her film work, for her work in creating understanding about Muslims around the world and for always creating unique multi-faith conversations while dealing with, with the realities uh, in our world. So we give that to, to her and to you all who have been a part of, of her film journey. And so, so thank you all for being here with us tonight. Um, and we have, we have our sister, Anna, Annalisa Bakri, who's an educator and trainer, and she's actually going to facilitate this discussion. But first, I just wanted to say thank you all and, and any reflections on you know, 10 years later and, and, and what it means for you all to be here in, in this global celebration uh, of Muslim film. Thank you, Dustin. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Um, thank you for being here, really. Um, and thank you to, you know, the Global Muslim Film Festival for having us as well. Um, I'm sorry if I sound groggy. It's a bit early in Singapore. <laughs> Okay, um, yes, for a teacher, 11.40 is actually luxury sleep time, okay? Um, but really, um, thank you all. I mean, I'm a bit nervous. I mean, I have Sharifa Amani here, which I think I have not thanked enough for saving me in 2013. I think we did this um, competition, Yasmin Ahmad competition in Singapore by the Convent Girls, uh, CHIJ Topayo, and you came in all the way from KL to assist us with a workshop. So thank you so much, Sharifa Mani. And of oh. course, yet, um, I don't think I have congratulated you for your win. So congratulations. And for Brian and Sharifa, uh, okay, do I call you both Sharifas or is Amani and Alicia? Um, uh, it's Amani for me and Alicia. Alicia, okay. Um, so hi Brian, hi Alicia. So um, with Mu'alaf, um, you see, we we talk about religion per se. We talk about human rights. We talk about humanity. Maybe let's start with something um, a little light, okay? Um, all of us have skeletons in our closet, right? So would there be any skeletons that you yourself revealed while you were filming? Mu'alaf. Was there anything to do with religion, you know, some kind of traumatic experience or, you know, funny anecdotes that, you know, brought to the mind when you were actually filming Mu'alaf? Mm, Brian's thinking, Brian's like, mm. <laughs> I spend most of the time at the cafe with Wi-Fi with Alicia. <laughs> um, I don't know, particularly, uh, the, I think the one of the memory was, um, one of the main memories for me was uh, I shaved my head bald uh, for this film. And I was 21 and the experience for me uh, as a filmmaker and as a person was very spiritual uh, because uh, at, my, but at that point I had been working for a while working with Yasmin, uh, we were quite established at that point already as the Yasmin Ahmad group filmmakers, right? We, we kept making films. Um, 
but yeah the backlash that i got after shaving my head was was really quite scary uh you know um but yeah i mean <laughs> For me, I did it because of the work. I did it because mm -hmm. of the work. I knew my niat was clear. Uh, my intentions were clear because I needed to, I needed to tell a story. Uh, it was really never about me. It was basically what what uh, Annie was going through, and so yeah. So these are the things that uh, you know how Yasmin wanted to tell the film. Now, if you watch Mu'alaf compared to all her other films, Mu'alaf was basically the one that she said that nothing happens, <laughs> nothing much happens, right? Uh, and but basically, two two very monumental roles, um, uh, not roles, two monumental scenes happen, and I knew one of the scenes uh, included uh, included me, and that was very that was very important to convey. Uh, but yeah, after after I shaved my head, uh, you know, um, there was a huge backlash by the community here, the Islamic community here, um, saying that all kinds of things, uh, you know. So it was it was in that sense, like you know, we're trying to educate people in acceptance and kindness, but but it doesn't come back the same way all the time. Mm. But I, I think with Yasmin Ahmad, I think we are never free from controversies. I remember, you know, I think in one of the films, you know, um, an Ustad actually helped a prostitute, you know, and then touching a dog. I think one thing about Yasmin Ahmad that I myself have learned as an educator is using such things to actually promote human relations, to promote um, humanity in that sense. Um, since you mentioned about, you know, uh, being in the Yasmin Ahmad crew and then, you know, for, for some of us here, uh, we may not know of her films enough. Perhaps um, how then had the human relation been highlighted or portrayed in Mu'alaf? Is it different from Sepet, Gubra, Mohsin? Was there something new? Was there a continuity uh, with regard to how Yasmin actually portray and interpret human relations? Anybody want to take that? Sure, um, I'll go ahead. Uh, sure, Brian. One thing about Yasmin's films, uh, I think people focus a lot on like the so-called controversial aspects of it or certain things. And I think she does those things on purpose. She, she, she likes to poke certain, uh, you know, things. But they are also very much based on people she knows and experiences that she had. At least that's the impression I get from, from speaking with her. You know, these stories uh, are loosely uh, interpretations of uh, people she's met, like the character I played um was uh is based on an a, a friend of childhood friend of hers uh who had experienced some sort of uh, similar sort of uh embarrassment or, or punishment by by uh his parent uh and could struggle was struggling to 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 forgive them all uh, uh for for things uh that they have done while, while he was young so um yes there are certain things that are controversial but i think they're very much based on human experiences uh that she she's she's seen um and even my character i think one thing you were asking about like so-called skeletons in the closet i think uh i realized that you know the, the character was uh, a lot of it was written based on what she saw me as as a, as a person uh and she incorporated those those uh weird <laughs> uh quirky things of my personality in, into the character um uh, because i i'm not a professional actor so um i think uh to to create that sense of realism i think she, she she wanted to do that and i think that's how the humanity of her films come across they're not um uh, based on some concept or idea that she wants to push and then therefore write something about it but they're actually very much rooted in in uh real world experiences and people that she know it might not be everyone's experience um i think that's a criticism uh some people would say like oh you know i didn't experience that growing up um well that's you um, that's not Yasmin. She experienced those things and she's telling a story. Um, and I think that's ultimately what she does. She tells stories about human experiences. Yeah, so I'll come, I'll come back. We'll go back and forth with different questions here. Um, but I think it's really interesting while the film may have been controversial in Malaysia, what we're doing here is we're attempting to celebrate it and say, you know, in the United States, one of the conversations, a lot of the conversations Muslim communities are having around spiritual wellness and how we create you know mosques and safe space where everyone's able to come in and, and, and enjoy and how we 
how we how we really talk about about spiritual meaning in community and in religious community. And I love that line in the film uh, where where I think it was you, Sharif Amani, who said, "Everyone is looking for God." Or no, what Christian turns you off to Christianity? And then right out of that line is the line, "Everyone is looking for God in their own way," right? Where it, where it, where there are histories of abuse that each of us go through and the spiritual journey. So can you all talk about the spiritual journey and kind of the spiritual journey of, of working with Yasmin in this film and in other work? Um, maybe you could repeat that, the question, Dustin, because it was a little like on our end, a little garbled. Oh, sorry. I was saying if you could if you could talk about the spiritual process uh, of, uh, you know, the, the film is obviously dealing with spiritual trauma and how people deal with spiritual trauma and leave religion and then religion in the film. And there's multiple layers of conversion happening within the film. So I was asking you to talk about, you know, one of the things we're very interested in is film as a spiritual process and spirituality in film. And I think the film is deeply spiritual. So, so can you talk about, your own spiritual journey as actors or actresses working with Yasmin and what that was like. Yan Yan. Yan Yan. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you say first actually, up. Okay. Actually, Moalaf is the first film that I worked with uh, Yasmin. Um, and the interesting thing is, it's also the first film that I came back to Malaysia to work in. Um, I was I was totally excited and, and going crazy uh, to to be in a film uh, with Yasmin Ahmad because after I watched Sepet, and and then and then uh, when I when we went into just now we talk about spirituality, right? Because when, when we went into the rehearsals, when I came all the way up to Kuala Lumpur to do the rehearsals, uh, Gamin actually asked me to stay a few more days uh, if I'm free, just to watch everybody rehearse. And I totally enjoy the, the process. And the, the whole process is so organic. Even though there's a, there is a script, there is a script that she, she wants everybody to follow, but at the same time, she accepted who we are, uh, the things that we came out with, and then the little quirks that we have as ourselves. I think in a way, uh, that that's why I enjoyed it crazily. I, I love it so much, working in Moala. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's the spiritual part. For me <laughs> that's her spirit that affects me, that the acceptance, that, that, that big, white arm that that comes to this new person that they have never met before but i'm a i'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan i'm a big fan and i just came in and then she just asked me she just let me spend time with everyone and i, I totally miss that those times i would say yeah you know. alicia <laughs> um I don't know. I think it's a it's a really interesting uh, it's a really interesting question, and it's something that I've been thinking about a lot. Like because I was in Mu'alaf when I was fourteen years old, that I was so I was really young when I was acting in Mu'alaf. But already at that age, I was um, I was really asking all these questions out loud, and I think that's why Yasmin put me in the film in the first place in something like that because I was always talking about religion and I was always asking like these really weird questions and um but what I think what the most important thing maybe was that for me spiritually being on a film with Yasmin was that she allowed me to ask questions because I think with Islam or with any like religion that is um you know, with big organized religions, they tell you, a lot of people like to tell you, you can't ask questions. But I think like with Yasmin, she was, she always allowed me, not allowed lah, but she always like, she didn't put me down for being a curious 14 year old, you know? She always, you can ask if you 
if nobody can answer that question, just like go look for the answer. Lah. And I really, I really enjoyed that because at 14 years old, to be told that you can ask any question that you want to ask was very empowering to me. Yeah, and I and I think that's something that like spiritually, spiritually, I want to carry forward as well. Yeah. I think in in her work in both Moala the characters and then I think her, her Yasmin's work in in, in uh, general, I think there's a great deal of respect for people's spiritual journey. I think um, and how people reach to where they are. Uh, there's less of judgment or less of like oh you must do it this way. Everyone's you know path to 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 God is this way or that way. Um, and hers is more like everyone has a different path, as you mentioned. Uh, Dustin, you know, there was a line in the film about, uh, you know, everyone finds God in their own way. Um, and I think there's a great deal of respect for that in Yasmin's work. And I think that's why it touches so many uh, different people. It's it's universal, it's very personal, but at the same time, very universal. Um, yeah. I mean, for me too, uh, Mu'alaf, I think when she wanted to make it, uh, you know, uh, and, she, and, you know, I was supposed to act in it. Uh, and it it was it was cool. And then I said I wanted to cut my hair. And then as she's like, I'll shave you bald. And I was like, okay, because that was just how we were, right? You challenge your actor, you build your actor, right? So yeah, um, we went on this thing. And you know, she she was afraid that this film was her most preachy film. This was something that she wanted to stay away from, and she was very worried about it. You know, she was very careful. Uh, because we're talking about verses from the Quran, Tao Te Ching, uh, you know, the the Bible and so on and so forth. Um, but she just wanted to talk about humans and about forgiveness. Um, you see, in Malaysia at the time, Yasmin was considered quite controversial. And I don't understand why. Because, like, she was just talking about everyday everyday things you know she was just questioning and she was portraying how malaysians were or are uh you know so I, mean, I don't know if you don't like what you see on screen maybe you should act better you know i don't know i don't know i don't know you know so it's the the filmmaker is just portraying what what she observes right so yeah um i think the shave ball thing was the was a very big thing for me as an actor because it was like shedding a, a, only after I got my head, head shaven, sacrificed. I felt that I sacrificed a bit of myself, even physically and not only emotionally for my craft. Um, I felt that I, it was okay to finally call myself an actor. Before that, I was not comfortable. I, I felt that I didn't sacrifice enough for my craft. So, uh, you know, I felt after going bald and after dealing with the backlash, uh, front page about People telling me I'm not a Muslim. People telling me I'm a horrible person. People telling me I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not enough. I'm not a good Muslim. I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough, you know. But having the support of people as well who understood my intentions, uh, my dad shaving ball with me, shaving his head ball with me, um, those kind of things right, made me think because, you know, here Yasmin was trying to tell a very simple story about forgiveness and suddenly the backlash was was ridiculous about how people of my own faith couldn't couldn't see the intention in it uh, everybody else was quite fine <laughs> you know but it was it was for some reason my own people um so yeah you know um, that was something that i had to learn through mu'alaf forgiveness well here we are all these years later still talking about the film right yep. and talking about the, the beauty of the film and so the haters are going to hate, and, yeah. and, love is, and love is going to win, right? And so I yeah. think that, that we have to realize that. And, and as someone who's, who, like I said, lived in Malaysia, I realize the complex nature of, of, of the society there. But at the same time, I think that there's so much beauty of the way that people interact. And we look at what's happening literally right now in the United States tonight. You know, an entire city is being burned to the ground because of how bad our race relations are. Um, yeah. So we and so we say a prayer for those those people in Minneapolis, and we, you know, for people struggling around the world for for justice. Um, so bring back an uh, Annalisa. Thank you, Dustin. Um, thank you so much, Amani. Um, actually, hearing you 
uh, make me feel very, very sad, in fact, because um, there were actually talks, you know, uh, with regard to how we can actually bring back Yasmin Ahmad films. Um, apparently, I'm not sure how true is this, she uh, received um, better acceptance in, in Singapore. Uh, usually, you know, we have like a full house for her screening, you know, and her talks. Um, one of the things that you mentioned just now was about forgiveness. And, you know, we all often heard about, you know, forgiven but not forgotten, you know. I can forgive you, but I cannot forget what you did. Um, and, you know, um, things like forgive and forget, you know. Uh, for you yourself, for, for the cast, in, in fact, uh, hearing all this backlash and, you know, but how, how do you actually reconcile that? Either through your characters or even your own personality. How, how do you bring yourself um, to, to forgive truly? Uh, because right now, you know, the idea of forgiveness, uh, I think people are tolerating, not truly forgiving. So, you know, um, what what can we do? I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, uh, anyone can answer. <laughs> um, I think for me, I was, like, I'll repeat again, I was really young when the film was... Uh, shot and when the film was uh, screened and yeah because the I think the film was screened in Singapore when I was 16 and the film was screened in Malaysia when I was 17 if I'm correct so yes still quite young and especially in terms of you know your spiritual identity and even your identity as a whole and I found it really interesting that this film that I was in was getting a lot of backlash and it was getting a lot of all these things from people uh, but um what i found really interesting was how um the different adults around me reacted to the backlash because i because i i felt like i didn't get much of it because nobody wanted to touch the kid right nobody was gonna like yeah hurt the little girl um but i so i watched how other people were getting um like comments or the backlash and I watched how they reacted and I found it really interesting because it was this tapestry of emotions because some were like completely ignoring it some really felt it and even like Yasmin and Nani and even my mom because my mom is close to Yasmin and she's very good close with uh, Nani and even them and it was all a sense of protection like everybody was protecting a baby and I found that really interesting because my mom's protecting her baby, her real life baby and then Yasmin's protecting her baby and her as the film. But I think also there was this sense of empathy. Um, I think a lot of things that people brought up because I was asking my mom a lot, um, like why are people reacting like this and the backlash, why is this happening? This is a simple film. There, there's nothing wrong happening in this film. And my mom said something very simple to me and she said uh, it was something along the lines of we don't really understand how people how people can see certain things but that's the point we have to figure out why they think like that and we have to have a discussion about that and I found that really that blew my mind open and I think a lot of it when I was younger and even until today because until today people will come up to me and talk to me about all the things in Mu'alaf that were bad or that were good. And I have to watch them explain it. And there's a sense of empathy that I need to be able to understand where this person is coming from and why they feel this way. And it just proves that Mu'alaf is such a great film because there's never a person who's just like, eh, about Mu'alaf. Because either people love Mu'alaf or they hate Mu'alaf. And that's a great film because those films are meant to bring out your opinions and your point of views and yeah sorry long answer but yeah i feel like one thing that i learned when i was younger was empathy that's a very important note actually empathy i think with what's happening in the world i think one thing is to tolerate to accept to have empathy and i think many of us actually even as educated adults we, we do not truly understand that uh, as to what is it's truly 
what, what does it really mean to empathize? Um, so right now, I'm going to open it up to the audience. Um, you can actually ask questions via social media. So please do so. Uh, we'll try to take as many questions as we can as well, so that you know it's a chance for you to interact with the cast. Um, if we, we look at um, what happened right now, you know, the city is being burned down and stuff like that. Uh, we look at the first question, which is by Sarah Halida. Hi, Sarah. Um, hi. Okay, I need to see the Apoi. question. Ahoy! Dia dekat o, apa, Oklahoma. Oakland, Oakland. Oakland. Oakland, California. Bukan hati saya je. Saya tak hafal dia orang punya geografi, sorry. Uh, no, yeah. Neither do I. <laughs> Hai Sarah okay. Balida, Assalamualaikum, Selamat Raya. Selamat Hari Raya, maaf jahil batin. Okay, she's saying that she loved this movie and she wished that we can broadcast more Malaysian movies here. Thank Insha you Allah. Sarah, inshallah we can do that. Um, there's another one, I am so happy uh, Malaysian to hear this. Um, and we are I'm happy to share happy the joy. Siu Fong um, Chan, thank you for this live. Yes, yes, love Yasmin movies. All the cast involved. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Mukoi Sai. Sama Hari Raya. Why that? You guys are really, really well loved. So forget about the backlash, really. Nobody cares, actually. Um, yeah, but I mean, it happened a while back. That, that yeah. it is. That what usually is yeah. the thing it happens when it happens and then yeah. later on or usually <laughs> in most places once you pass away suddenly you become important. okay important yeah yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's actually truly very sad i feel uh, we do not appreciate our talents enough we do not appreciate people who bring about alternative views um yeah. <laughs> we, we are so you know rooted in in what we think is correct or cor right uh, but what is right you know, how do you know it's right if you have not heard from the other parties, right? So uh, we move on to the perhaps um, the next question uh, with regard to, you know, we, we talk about this being the global film, you know, Muslim film festival. Um, of course, there are a lot of definitions that we can argue about, but let's not go there, you know, like what, what do we mean by global, what we do mean by Muslim. Uh, but really, if we look at the rising tide of, you know, conservatism, you know, uh, people are getting pretty conservative, um, either as a result of, you know, the traumatizing 9-11. How do you think Mu'alaf uh, or people could actually benefit from watching Mu'alaf? <laughs> that's heavy! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, I personally, I don't think we can solve world massive issues by just a film. But I think it can aid that. I think it can help that. I mean, the use of film is to to capture a generation, to tell a story of that particular generation. What happened during that time? How were the people behaving with each other? Uh, that, so that's what that that's what films are for. But I I, I don't know like if it can change anything or it can you know maybe it can inspire, maybe it can spark something within within people you know, and that's it you know. Other than that, don't know lah how it can solve the everything. Very hard. <laughs> yeah. Very uh, hard. I think if, if people talk a lot about like diversity and representation and all that. I think make and watch films that show a diverse uh, array of people. You know, like a Muslim is not just a person who is this or from this part of the world and has this type of life experience. A Muslim can be a lot of different things uh, and, and so on and so forth for different sort of identities. I think, I think that is, again, one of the beauty of Nazbin's work. I think she shows people in all our sort of our glories and also our uh, weaknesses and, and everyone's life experience is different. Um, but we can all relate hey somehow i think that's uh you know i think that's that's one way we, we, we we're not going to solve the world's problems but we can show that there's not just one way to be and only one way to live uh and that you know whatever it is that you are you you should be able to 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 tell your story i think in, that your story and your life is actually ha of, of value i think uh yen yen do you have anything to add Uh, I think you have to unmute yourself. Yep. 
Halo, halo, halo. Oke, okay, ready. <laughs> si Kema unmute. Oke, okay, no no. Oke. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, Well done. I, well, I must say I totally agree with Brian. And just now, as as what Nani was mentioning, what uh, when Yasmin was making this film, the one thing that she really wanted to avoid is to teach people. Uh, is to you know. Um, so she just want to tell stories. I think uh, this this is the great thing about creating art work. Uh, we are not to teach, uh, but to tell story, and we hope you are inspired uh, in the artwork when you, uh, after you watch the film or uh, watch the artwork, you get inspired on a certain aspect of your life. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's, that's the, the real beauty of art as well in the sense that, you know, uh, it's not just relevant in a certain context or in a certain society per se. I think with regard to the word of art, uh, whether it's it film, whether it's it literature, I think it transcends those realms. It transcends those man-made boundaries that we have. Um, you know, it breaks down walls, it inspire. I mean, I... I truly agree with Armani and Brian and Yan Yan in the sense that I don't expect one film to change the world. But I think it is a step forward, um, you know, in raising consciousness, in telling people, you know, there's diversity in life, you know. We are not homogeneous, even as Muslims, as Christians, as Buddhists. Um, there's a lot more to life than just black and white as well. So I'm going to bring uh, Dustin back. Hello, Dustin. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, what's we up, can. Dustin? What's hey. up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Something. Yeah. More questions. Yeah, no. So, so we can go back to some more reflections from the audience as well. Um, there's this one. Still watching Yasmin's movies all the time. All these movies hopefully get more screening at, at many other countries to share these great messages of stories. You know, how to, not, no matter how big or small. And then there's our sister. Aisha from Colorado, love this movie and all of them. And Miss Le Yasmin Ahmed, mercy on her soul. I mean, can we talk about how and why she chooses to set it in Ipo instead of KL? That's a great question. Uh, I take this one. Okay, sure. Okay, so basically, one of the reason is so it's easier that the cast and crew don't run away while shooting. <laughs> so everybody, everybody is in one place. Uh, so that that's geographically, why, right? So we go after rehearsing, you know, how many months we rehearse, we would go to Ipo and everybody would be in the same area, right? We rent one hotel and we will be in, everybody in different rooms in one hotel. We will eat together, we, we go filming together, we have supper together, we go back together. It was a very close environment and it made us, you know, it made us that much closer every day. I mean, Brian and Leisha were like off doing their own things and they just left me, you know? I'm like, I'm your sister. <laughs> Who's Brian? Who's Brian? What are you doing? I think we did once. No, no, no. Once, and we never heard the end of it. Yes, because you left me. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, so that uh, it was. It was also you know when you do that, when you take people away from from the place that they're comfortable, and you set them with. Uh, strangers or people that they don't hang out with you become a family like it or not these are the people you depend on these are the people that you know this is your family uh, second uh, Ipo is so quaint I I hope uh, that if anybody gets the chance to visit Malaysia please go to Ipo it is a small town an hour outside Kuala Lumpur uh, the food is ridiculously good oh my god the food is great the people's great the, the people's great um, one thing that I remember Yasmin saying was that why Ipo is so attractive to her is because in Ipo she feels that maybe they have less hang-ups because you've got a church next to a masjid, next to a temple, and it was fine. It was fine. Everybody had to, you know, if they want to worship, they would go and worship. And it wasn't a, it wasn't a big deal that it was next to a church, next to a temple, next to a anything, because my worship is my worship. So, yeah, it's really beautiful. Ipo, small town, no hang-ups, great people, great food. Why wouldn't you want to go? 
And, and of course, the, her museum, the Yasmin Ahmed, uh, Yasmin at Kongheng Museum is also an EPO. Could you all talk a little bit about the, the museum and, and let's give a shout out to the museum and, and the, the books that they've published and the, the work that they're doing and helping us to set up this screening, screening tonight as well. Could you all talk a little bit about that? Um, Have you visited the museum? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Um, no, I think that's a, a sign of how well loved uh, Jasmine is to uh, many Malaysians. I think, uh, despite the fact that she's already passed um, on for uh, uh, ten years ago, more than ten years ago, yeah. and uh, but her, her films and her stories and 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 her, even like a book of her quotations, you know, like for example, uh, people refer to it all the time. So I think. Her, her legacy lives on, um, and I think one way in a physical way is um, is in this this museum, which basically showcases uh, her work uh, in film and also in advertising, uh, and also her writings, uh, along with some personal uh, items of hers. Um, and I think you know, I encourage everyone who has the opportunity to to visit Epo, I think, just to, to drop by and 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 it'll put a smile on your face. It's a lot of it is very. Uh, it's not only touching. Uh, I think a lot of it's very funny uh, because Yasmin, I think, is a uh, one probably uh, not well known fact, or maybe it is, uh, is that she is a hilarious woman, um, making a lot of times inappropriate jokes. <laughs> <at the wrong laughs> time. I was just about to but say, but that's why that's why that's why we all love her. Uh, I think, uh, that, yeah, she's, she's in this a serious filmmaker who's always she's also uh, hilarious and very, very funny woman. And I think that that museum does, does show that. Um, so yes, I encourage anyone who has the opportunity to to, to visit Ipoh, uh, to not just stop by for the food, but also drop by at the museum and um, yeah, support it because it needs uh, all the support we can get. Yeah, and, and you know, we and speaking of some of her advertising work in the Raya commercials, we talked a little bit before we started the stream, how are you all doing, right? We heard that the, there weren't as many they couldn't shoot the Raya commercials. They couldn't finish them this year. So there were only, I know the, um, there was one that was animated. It was still a, a, a good commercial, but maybe it wasn't the, the normal Raya commercials. As, as you were also saying, the film industry is especially hard hit in these times. So could you all just reflect on the state of, of the world for, for filmmakers and for actors? Yeah, I want to know how Singapore's doing, Yen Yen. Um, Singapore, the film industry i mean they're gonna release the you know that you could start filming in uh on from 2nd of june but the thing is there is a certain numbers of people and then you have to uh try to do the, the social distancing you know they have to you follow certain rules but we are going to have a meeting tomorrow uh with most of the actors uh you know to have a, a, a meeting to talk about how are we going to observe all these rules as an actor because we we actually can't really wear mask or shield <laughs> we have to touch we have to might be sometimes hugging kissing and so how are we going to continue with this in this situation so tomorrow there will be a meeting with the singapore community and uh I, I fingers crossed that we could uh, uh, we can start working, and I heard in Malaysia we can start working too, right? In a smaller group. Yeah. But yeah, we are pretty hard hit, even in Singapore. I mean, everywhere in the world right now, it's pretty hard hit because, to me, uh, filming is one of the most human centric work in the world. <laughs> And there's a lot of communication. There's a lot of uh, body interactions. So I, I am, I am kind of worried. So, Nani, yeah, what is, how um, do you feel? yeah, it's it's been tough. Uh, you know, if if actors are worried, and you know, where, how are we how are we going to pay the next month's bill or put food on the table? Imagine the the crew. That's that's my that's my utmost worry uh, because in Malaysia we don't have laws to protect us we don't have unions we don't have uh, a, a, a functioning system or a healthy ecosystem so this was something that's been going on for a while already so you know COVID just like 
brought it to the forefront, you know. Um, I guess the good thing that comes out of this, uh, people are really discussing now. You know, people are really discussing, uh, discussing how we function in the first place uh, before, you know. So, yeah, at least, at the very least, we're talking about it now, getting getting some stuff sorted out, you know, um, as to when we get to shoot again or, or, you know, what is the standard operating procedures that we have to follow. It's still week by week updates. Um, they said that we are allowed to shoot after Raya, uh, after I, I do Fitri and uh, I do Fitri is like a month. So I don't know when, they're not very specific about that. So I'm not sure. So we wait lah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, there's also a few um, arts groups that is creating, uh, you know, like crowdfunding for uh, people who are freelancing to be able to apply for the funds in Singapore. I hope, I hope in Malaysia we will have certain things like this too. Yeah, yeah we we do we do. Uh, there's fun not funding. It's not funding. It's different from Singapore. Singapore like fundraising. There's yeah, a yeah, fundraising yeah. going yeah. on. But Singapore government give. So very good. No, 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 no. It's not government. No, it's it's, it's people a private, crowdfund. It's a, yeah, people crowdfund to... Um, yeah, there's, people a, there's, a, there's a group from the theater. theater ah, uh, bless, uh, bless. Pasa Glamour. So they, yeah. they actually like Pam and, and yeah. Janice Cole. Pam Wee, Janice Cole. They set up a, a funding and so that people could... Uh, people from the art scene who, do, who does uh, live performances, you know, uh, musicians or writers, musicians, uh, actors, you you could apply for that. You know, it's not big, but it it's like an emergency fund for everyone. Yes, yes. So we could go for it. Yeah. We 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 also have something of the sort. We have to apply and you have to go collect. Yeah. So. In a way, other. In a way, other. Yes. Yeah, I think we do our best to help in any little way. Yeah. Uh, to help each other. I think it's very important at this point. I mean, it's important any time, but at this point of time, it's one of the most important thing right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the things that uh, you know, we're talking about COVID and all, and we also talk about human dignity and forgiveness. Um, I think one of the things that struck me when I was watching or re-watching Mu'alaf is actually about the migrant workers. Um, I think even in Malaysia, you know, we have issues of, you know, uh, lack of help or aid for the, these migrant communities. And in the same case for, for Singapore as well, um, we have been in the news, uh, I'm not sure for the good reasons, uh, when it comes to the migrant communities. And I think, um, you know, the kind of comments, if, if we read, um, I think I'm sure the cast, uh, you, 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 could, you could relate to it, um, how harsh human beings, fellow human beings can actually be uh, when they talk about another fellow human being. You know? um, and, and the migrant community, I think they have really been um, trashed. Uh, by so many privilege or people, you know, speaking from a position of privilege um, when it comes to, you know, blaming them for things and, you know, um, so so at least for, for, for many Singaporeans as well, I, I would dare say um, there have been efforts to help. Um, I'm just wondering whether, you know, um, you know, films like Mo'alaf would actually bring them a little bit more of, you know, um, solitude you know, uh, give them a bit more of, you know, warmth. And and I think perhaps it could something, you know, that um, theatre companies, um, you know, people from the art scene, uh, something that we know we, we can think about. Uh, I think we forgot about this smaller, maybe what we deem as less important until what Amani said, until you put it in the forefront, you know, thanks or no thanks to COVID. Um, you know, we, we actually have not talked about such things enough. Um, so, I, I'm not sure how um, COVID has, you know, instilled in, in, in fellow human beings, in, in, in us, whether we we are that human to begin with. Oh, I love the cat. <laughs> yeah. Assalamu alaikum, Kitty. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And I think to me, you know, that at, the, at the end of the festival, we're also having a, a, a screening about radical film. 
talking about the recent Riz Ahmed film that came out. I don't know if you all saw it where in London, where at the end of it, all these Muslims were rounded up and kind of murdered and the, the level of situation go. And then we're also showing um, Battle of Algiers. And that's the reality, right? Is that we're in such a different time right now that we also have to have real conversations about the future of what capitalism is and the way, you know, our world has been constructed around us. And I think as artists, we have to be brave in these times. So can you all, maybe that's a way to, to frame it as well. Can you all talk about, you know, I think part of the question was about, about immigrants and the, the representation of, of, of immigrant communities. You know, I, I live near the US-Mexico border and I made a really beautiful film about, about the work the Muslims and Christians were doing together at the border called The Prayer Beyond Borders. I, I highly recommend that you all check it out. But um, but I think it's really important that we that we do these work to, to bridge. So sorry, go back go back to the question. I just want to recommend uh, speaking of films about migrant communities, uh, Yen Yen's uh, amazing uh, Ilo Ilo, uh, yeah. one of my favorite films, uh, yeah. which is a story about uh, a Singaporean family and their uh, Filipino like uh, domestic maid. Uh, I think that is yeah, definitely just want to recommend that. Agreed. It's brilliant. It was a brilliant film, and Yan Yan's brilliant in it. Yan Yan, can you talk about it? Thank you. Um, Ilo Ilo, I, I, I just talk about from the experience of Ilo Ilo. I think that it, it's, it's very hard to separate the human um, emotions from people who are around you every day. I think sometimes uh, we forget to how to react to the person. To, to who who is with you every day, but actually they're working for you, or they are part of your family. I mean, from the Ilo Ilo experience, um, it, it 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 reminds many people that actually that is part of your growing up process, having another person who is also like relatives, who is also like someone who is working for you. I mean, from from Ilo Ilo. Um, at at this point right now, I think uh, I think I just want to I just hope that everybody put put your uh, to to embrace more that we are human, no matter what, uh, whether you're from another country, whether you you earn more or you earn less, you have better place to stay or not. This is the time to look at each other as human. Uh, especially at this COVID-19 time. Uh, there are so many people online who are giving many nasty messages to everyone, to anyone yeah. that, that probably had, you know, anyone that don't really, they don't really know. So uh, I just hope that everybody put a bit of compassion in your heart to be, to, to put out a better energy, the better positive energy to everyone in the world right now. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, someone actually asked um, the title of the movie. It's um, ILO, ILO, right? Yeah. ILO, ILO. ILO, ILO. Um, yeah. Check out Yo Yen Yen in there. Um, I think I watch it on the first date. Gosh. Why? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but kind of I, I remember I was like, <laughs> you know, like, you know, I need to concentrate on Ilo Ilo, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, but really, um, that's also, I think, uh, someone mentioned here about the iMac computer that Ka Yasmin used before um, at, in, in Leo Burnett. Yes. Um, I remember that. I think I was with. I visited Abang Jovian in Leo Burnett, in Tuala Lumpur, and he was like, oh, we just cleared her office. And then the aircon switched on. And I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> you know? Um, but just being in her office for the very first time, uh, wow, that, that whole aura, vibe, you know? I'm sure a lot of creative work, you know, was conceptualized there. You know, a lot of discussions must have happened there. Um, you, you guys are really so blessed to have worked with Yasmin Ahmad, really. Uh, and thank you for sharing her films with us, you know, for sharing her stories with us. Without with, with all of you there, um, we would not be able to actually learn from, from her. Um, in fact, I think all her films have, have educated me in, in one way or another, you know. Um, teach me, in, you know, on, on how to be more human. 
you know, I think, I think like you mentioned, you know, we, we forgot. You know, we, we are human beings and we tend to forget so much. I mean, even Yen Yen's um, character in Mu'alaf, Cindy, right? Um, you know, I was wondering she's going to take that money for herself. And I was like, you know, I mean, she was bashed up, right, in the movie. Uh, but, yeah, so you got to watch the film to, to know what happened to the money, <laughs> okay? Um, and then, of course, you know, uh, I, I do pity that poor boy, you know, having to stand by the roadside, you know, um, in, in that state. And actually, you are... Yeah, these things do happen, you know. Uh, it's just whether it, it gets reported in the news, you know. Uh, we, we we heard about you know how terrible parents could be, so you know these these are real stories. I mean, it, you you need to have that courage, moral courage, to actually um, speak about it, think about it, act act it out. Uh, and so I, I really have to thank all of you for for that, for for just doing it, you know, um, for going bold, for instance, you know, for taking the backlash from. God knows who, you know, you don't even know them. And then, you know, they have a lot of things to say for you. So, yep. Uh, apparently, Ilo Ilo is available on YouTube. Somebody commented there. Thanks, Aisha. Um, I'm, I'm sure they'll be watching it soon. <laughs> okay. Um, back to you, Dustin. I don't know if we were supposed to say that one. Um, find it at your the correct streaming platform, uh, if you can, please. No, so... So we wanted to, you know, we don't we don't want to take your whole day. We know it's still the morning there, um, and so we wanted to thank you again. Thank thank you, Annalisa, for for joining us. Maybe since this is a, a film festival about connecting people to to films around the world they haven't seen before, and we started talking about one recommended film, maybe we could close with you all talking about, you know, either one of the film, one of the Yasmin Ahmed films people should check out or one of the, you know, what you're working on right now or just a film that you watched recently that you recommend that people watch uh, as we're all at home with lots of time. For me, I would recommend if you haven't seen any Yasmin Ahmed films, uh, give it a watch. Um, uh, for me, it gives me hope. It's a bit idealistic, you know, but that's who she was and it's not, it's not a problem. It makes me very happy. It gives me warm, fuzzy feelings inside. Um, watching watching from Sepet all the way to Talent Time. How she incorporated so many religions, so many teachings, so many quotes, so many people uh, of different colours, background, beliefs in one film. Uh, just mirroring us as Malaysians. Yeah, that's why I love her film. So yeah. If you haven't seen the other Yasmin Ahmad films, give it a go. My favorite is Moksin, where where it's a, a little orchid. Yeah, that's my favorite one. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I think uh, my favorite Yasmin film is Sip It. And it's oh. just, yeah, I, 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 I've loved Sip It since the first time I watched it. And I think it's always, it's a film that I wish everybody could see. Um, at the moment, it's a little tough to get your hands on it. But if you do get your hands on it, please watch Sip It. And I feel like that just makes it even more special because it's harder to get your hands on uh, Sip It. But it's a great film. And yeah, I think, um, you know, one way we were talking about migrants and everything, right? And one way we can understand each other is to be able to watch films from each other like you know like how star wars was inspired by akira kurosawa in japan and it's really interesting because like what only a few decades earlier japan had attacked pearl harbor and i feel like it's really interesting the cultural exchange that happens with film and i hope that especially through this film festival that happens more but even outside of the film festivals with streaming platforms like Netflix and um, Amazon Prime and Hulu. There's all kinds of places for you to watch all kinds of films from all kinds of places. And I think it's just about one thing to know about each other because, you know, we don't live on this earth by ourselves. And we don't, we can't travel without each other. We can't exist without each other. So I think it's it would be great to be able to... Um, just watch films by other people and discuss films by other people, you know, and like do it with your friends. W read subtitles. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> I was so going to say that. Guys, 
it teaches you multitasking skills like no other because you have to watch a film and read <laughs> subtitles. So read subtitles. There's no yes. excuse for like it's not in English or it's not <laughs> in a language I don't understand because you don't you understand one language that that cuts out the whole world from you. And I think it's a great moment to like. Also, it's a great excuse to learn a new language. But yeah, it this is. I think this is a great time to realize that films carry not only our stories but our legacy, our culture, our identities, everywhere they can. And I think that's why film is so important. So yeah, watch all kinds of films. Yes. Amen. Look at how far this fourteen-year-old when she was filming while life has come, right? <laughs> I don't think I can give any a better answer than that. Uh, but I completely agree. You know, again learn about uh, everyone else's experience um the world does not revolve around, around you alone or your experience alone um but of yasmin's films i think i would agree with nani um muxin is probably one of my favorite i uh, i think it's it's very well made uh terrific performances by one of their sisters uh who's uh who's not on on this call um and yeah definitely recommend muxin uh again one more recommendation for ilo ilo um I think yeah, there's there's lots of great films out there. Um, we're not just limited to what what is produced by Hollywood. Um, I think the beauty of of streaming platforms and things like that is we're watching Korean films now. We're watching films from India and and all that. Um, so I hope this trend continues. Um, I think that would help create a better understanding among each other. And apparently, Muxen is on uh, Amazon Prime. Someone someone said. So, so thank you for that. We'll definitely have to watch it. And I was going to say, related to the last comment about no one another, right? Re related to your character in the film, 4913, right? Versus 4913 in the Quran. We've made you into nations and tribes to no one another. So yeah, thank you all for, the, for this beautiful conversation and for, for being here with us. And, um, you know, maybe any, I, th I really think part of what needs to happen with Yasmin's films, and I know that it's this, this is complicated, but they have to become the high quality HD conversions, the, you know, the really globalization of the films. And, and it, it takes a village to, to work on something like that. And we know some friends with some great uh, crowdfunding platforms in the U.S. as well, as well called LaunchGood, who's one of our partners uh, on this, this, this film, this, this, this uh, film festival. So inshallah, maybe by next year we can have something like that together. And, you know, we'd love to, to support however we can. So, so thank you all. Any any closing words or closing thoughts? Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank uh, you. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. We enjoyed ourselves. Yeah. Thanks for watching the film. Yeah, I, think again. I think it's great. I just yeah, I this is great, you know, that like ten years, eleven years later, Yasmin's films are uh, being shown all over the world now, online. Uh, this small little film that we did that we shot in 10, 11 days and now 12 days and now like mm -hmm. it's being shown to the whole world or at least whoever has the link but it's great and uh, it's really heartwarming and it's really humbling that we were able to be part of this journey with Yasmin and that um, we were part of that whole experience because it's crazy <laughs> looking at it it's like the amount of people that love her and love her films is insane so thank you very much wow, thank you everyone you. um i think this is the perfect film for us to also be um treading on the journey of mu'alab itself returning to the whole idea of humanity the whole idea of human dignity and how we ourselves can be better beings um, better humans and how can we forge the path, you know, uh, in time to come to, to make this world, oh, I sound like Miss Universe, a better place, you know, world peace, you know, but really, um, at the end of the day, um, we can only hope, but hope is, is a very important uh, aspect in life. Uh, we can't move on without hope. There must be hope. There must be aspiration for, for a better tomorrow in that sense. So I think that is how I, I would take um, away from Mu'alaf, um, the whole idea of us coming together, um, reflecting upon what's important in life, the finer things in life, you know, and I think COVID has provided that, 
that opportunity at it, at least for me um being stuck at home not meeting my students <laughs> um, has allowed me to, you know, spend a bit more time to think about the kind of person that I want to be, the kind of educator that I want to be, um, and, and the kind of friends that I want to be to the people around me. So I think there's a lot of hope, there's a lot of faith, there's a lot of love that we can derive from Mu'alaf. And I, I thank you all once again. Thank you, everyone. Terima kasih. Thank you very much. Selamat Hari Raya. Selamat Hari Raya. Selamat Hari Raya. Assalamualaikum. Thank you all. And so, so just some, some last minute housekeeping points is uh, tomorrow we have the film Music of the Mystics, the Kuali documentary with Fana Fia Law, which is a really, really beautiful film uh, with his brother Tahir Kuali, who converted to Islam at a very young age, traveled to Pakistan and has been singing Kuali music for the last 20 years. And then on Sunday, we have a film with uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov, the, the famous UFC fighter that goes with him to Dagestan and really talks about the spiritual path of, of fighting which uh, many people may not think of it that way, but as we know in Malaysia with Silat and things, people, some people do. So so those are the, that's what's coming up the rest of the weekend. And then we have five more weekends or four more weekends after that. So thank you again, everyone for joining and and uh, prayers for our sister Yasmin, uh, Fatiha for her, and uh, may Allah make it easy and, and, and give her give her much mercy. I mean, thank, thank you. you. So, thank you. Assalamualaikum. Bye. Assalamualaikum. Um. Oh.